Okay, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, it's my great honor and my great privilege to introduce the greatest Indian movie star of all time, and in my opinion, the greatest cinema star of all time, Mr. Amitabh Bachchan. Um, all these people are here for you, sir. Um, after all these years, can you get used to this much love that you get everywhere you go? Thank you so much for being here, ladies and gentlemen. It's always a, a great joy and pleasure uh, to meet well-wishers and fans. And I'm very grateful to Apple for having me here this evening. And um, hope we can have some uh, questions on yeah. uh, the making of Shamitab. We're here to promote the film. It's releasing on the 6th of February. It's been um, <coughs> a very unique experience for me to work with um, with uh, R. Balki, the director of the film. He's always brought across some very unusual stories, uh, different kinds of setups, plots. And I do believe that this one is, uh, is yet another attempt at doing something different, very refreshing. And I uh, hope you like the film. Um, talking about uh, Mr. R. Balki, whenever he comes to you with a subject, it's always something completely different. Do you now look forward to speaking to him when he comes to you with a subject? Well, it's come to the stage where uh, there's so much trust and belief in him that uh, uh, every time he comes, I know that he's going to bring something different. He has a different approach to storytelling, filmmaking, and um, I just appreciate the fact that uh, he has the intelligence to think of something which is uh, not normal, uh, not, this, not the same commercial escapist fare that uh, most um, uh, Indian movies are normally associated with. So um, it's always a great joy. And I know that he has a couple of more ideas in his mind, and I look forward to working with them. But do you get worried, like, thinking, how does he come up with these ideas? Because, I mean, is he, like, taking something or smoking I, something when he comes up with these ideas? I keep asking him all the time, what have you been drinking? But, um, no, he's, uh, he's actually uh, someone that um, has associated with advertising. He heads the Low Linta's advertising concern in India. And he's been in the business for long. Uh, I've worked with him on many campaigns in the advertising world uh, for promotion of brands, um, products. And um, I've always found him to be, have a very different approach uh, to whatever he was working at. And um, then one fine day he said, I want to make a film. And I have a story. And he came and narrated Chini Kam, mm -hmm. which is the first one that I did with him. And then we did Pa which was another very unusual story, and certainly a very challenging role for me. Well, with Pa, did you feel like you've set a really high benchmark? Because it's a landmark movie, and it's one of your finest performances of all time. Did you feel under pressure to match up to Pa with Shamitab? I don't think I look at uh, filmmaking in that manner. Okay. Uh, I look at every individual project as something that is different and separate from what I've already done. Um, I think it's wrong to put a benchmark on one of your products and uh, say, well, I have to match that. I think each, uh, each film has its own reputation, its own standard. Um, the kind of influence it has or the kind of influence it makes on well-wishers such as you and uh, what you think about the film. For me, it's, uh, it's a project that's done and done with, and I look forward to the next one. Mm -hmm. um, over the last 10 or 15 years, I've heard every conceivable story about how a film was conceived, but I think my favorite is how R. Balki came up with the idea for Shamitab. Is it true that he gave it to you as a birthday present? Well, I keep hearing these stories, but I, I'm not so sure whether it's, uh, it's entirely he, correct. He said it. He said he couldn't think of a birthday present for well, you. I think and he, was, yeah, he was on his way to meet me uh, on my birthday, and uh, he was stuck in a traffic jam. And that's when he conceived of the idea, and when he came to see me, he said, happy birthday. But we, did you not say, where's my present, and do I, do I don't have a present or anything? No, I think this is a, a great present, if he thinks it was one. Uh, okay, so if you want to buy Mr. Butchin a really good present, just give him a really, really great idea, <laughs> okay? And um, a lot of the times, ideas don't, that sound really good don't often translate onto the screenplay, but you, were you surprised by how well it translated? Because I've seen so many films, I've never seen this concept before. Yes, as I said earlier on, uh, this is uh, a plot which is very unusual for Indian cinema. It's, uh, it's not been seen before, and um, only somebody like Balki could have thought of it. 
but it is it is different and uh, i was about to explain what the what the plot was it's 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 a story of two individuals who possess uh, different kinds of talents and how a journalist um, suggests to the two of them to come together and uh, achieve success um, Dhanush, who plays the, the leading man of the film, um, doesn't have a voice. And I am giving my voice to Dhanush. So when we uh, sat down to work on the film, I actually recorded the entire film uh, before going on set. And then when we went on set, we, um, we played back the entire recording and we performed to it. And when it was over, then we came back into the dubbing studio to redub the whole film again, because your facial expressions need to match what you had recorded earlier. And um, so it was a bit tedious, but I think uh, worth the effort. And um, did you have a say on who plays, who has your voice? Like, did you have a say in Danush, or did you did you recommend Danush? No, I think that uh, uh, Balki and me often sit and discuss okay. uh, when we have a project on hand. Um, and uh, I think uh, initially uh, Balki was wanting Shah Rukh to play the role, but it didn't work out. I can see a lady almost uh, gasp there <laughs> on the name of Shah Rukh Khan. Um, <coughs> but um, uh, for some reason it didn't work out, and then we had Dhanush playing the role. Man. I mean, for people who don't know, Dhanush is an outstanding actor, and in South Indian films, he's like one of the most popular actors there. Um, how do you, when you're acting with people like Danush, like if you look at the trailer, your chemistry is instant with all these actors. Is there something that you do to make the chemistry with your co-stars so good? No, I think I just play my character and uh, that's about it. Uh, that's the best we can do. I think when we get in front of the camera, it's, uh, we never think about uh, what our personal relationship is with the person. We try and do our best in maintaining the character. So irrespective of who is in front of you, it could be a family member, it could be a dear friend, but if it uh, involves uh, in the making of the film that I need to be upset with him, whack him or <laughs> whatever, uh, we just go ahead and do it. And um, can you tell us about more about your character? I know you, you're not allowed to give too much away, but what can you tell us about your character as an, in, as an individual? Uh, he's, uh, he's somebody that is my age, um, which is close to 70 years, and he's uh, a very frustrated human being. He's almost wasted. He uh, lives a very decrepit life. Uh, and I don't know if you saw some of the visuals in the trailer. Um, he's very unkempt. He doesn't care too much about himself. Uh, he's a bit of an alcoholic. And that's how he lives. Um, but he has a voice. And the journalist feels that if this voice were to be uh, put onto Dhanush, then perhaps. Uh, the combination could work very well. And that's exactly what happens. With, I mean, I've only seen the trailers, but one of the things that I'm getting from your character is he's very Shakespearean. Like, he's, he gives something away, and then he then starts going a bit jealous and, and envious. And I've kind of seen a kind of parallel between some of the characters in Shakespeare. I mean, I don't well, know if you've seen that. <laughs> this is the first time I'm hearing some kind of uh, logic behind my character. <laughs> it's nothing to do with Shakespeare at all. Uh, it's... Um, <laughs> Yes, um, I think when two people combine and they have different talents, um, at some point in time when they achieve success, um, there is the question of ego that comes in. And uh, that's what happens in the story. And when ego comes in, there are, um, there are moments when um, a lot of differences crop up. What happens to the story after the differences, uh, whether it is resolved or not, is what you should see in the film. Mm -hmm. Do you have a, a favorite moment in the movie? I mean, I know everyone's probably asking you this and you probably can't choose a favorite moment, but is there one moment in the movie for you that really stands out? Not really. I think that um, I would like to believe that the entire film is, is uh, very special to me. Uh, there are many sequences in the film which, uh, um, which are challenging as an actor, and I hope that I've been able to do justice to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, this film um, celebrates your voice. Um, do you feel like you've almost come full circle because in your early days you'd auditioned uh, to be on radio and they stupidly turned him down? <laughs> and do you feel like you've gone full circle now there's actually a movie that's celebrating the magnificence of your voice? No, I don't look at it that way. I, I'm sure that they must have their reasons for having uh, 
not approved my voice. It was very early years. I was just out of college. I was looking for a job. And uh, someone suggested that I could perhaps audition as a commentator or a newsreader in All India Radio. And uh, I went and auditioned, and they felt that uh, it wasn't good enough. Mind you, there were some extremely uh, excellent voices that were associated with All India Radio at that point of time. So probably I didn't match up to them. But um, I've never looked at um, my career or my life in that manner. Mm -hmm. I just feel that uh, it's a job that has to be done. And why connect something that has already passed with what is happening in the present? Mm -hmm. um, I'll be doing a lot of research on Shamitab. And one of the things that keeps coming out is that one of the big surprise packages in the film is going to be Akshara, who is making her debut in the film. Can you talk about her? Well, Akshara comes from a great lineage. Her father, Kamal Hassan, another legend from the South. Uh, mother, Sarika, uh, a great artist. And uh, she has a very striking personality. She uh, has a lovely face. Um, many of the portions in the film, when she doesn't have to say anything, she says a lot. Um, and that speaks volumes for an actor. Um, it doesn't look as though this is her first film. Mm -hmm. And uh, th that's remarkable for any newcomer. Even from the trailer, I mean, she looks so confident in the yeah. film. But was she nervous acting opposite you and opposite no. Danush? But I heard she wasn't, actually. I heard she was really confident. Yeah, she. I don't see why someone would be nervous. I mean, once you've taken up a profession, you, uh, you want to look at it as a job that you need to do well. Uh, I think nervousness uh, is something that you leave behind. Or if you do have it, you don't want to express it. Sir, so I, I, I don't want to break this to you, but everybody gets nervous around you, whether it's someone who's interviewing you, whether it's a fan, whether it's a co-star. And I know you're very, very modest about this, but we do get nervous around you. None of these people are looking nervous at all. <laughs> are you nervous? A little bit. <laughs> and um, can you talk a little bit about the music of the film? Because Ilya Raja, has, the guy who's um, done the soundtrack for this film, he's done 1,000 soundtracks. And I believe yours is 999. No, it's actually a, a lot more than 1,000. OK. But we were paying a tribute to him because he'd crossed a 1,000 figure. So uh, he's, an, he's an institution. And uh, over a 1,000 films, each film having about five or six songs. That's about 6,000 songs. And then he does the background music of the film. And um, just an amazing personality. And Every time he creates something new for a film, it's just quite remarkable. Um, there was a period in his life, in his career, when he um, did about 56 films in 52 weeks. Wow. And for four years continuously. That's an immense amount of work and creativity. So you can imagine uh, his genius, really, in the in the field of music. He's a very humble human being. And uh, when uh, we were launching the music of Shamidab in, in Mumbai, we felt it only appropriate to pay tribute to this absolute genius. And that's why we had uh, Rajnikanth, Kamal Hassan, uh, Sri Devi um, to actually pay tribute to him. Uh, these three individuals, uh, Rajni, Kamal, and Sri Devi, uh, their first films in their career had music by Ilya Raja, and we thought it appropriate that they should be the ones that should pay tribute to this uh, great human being. I mean, he's composed a great soundtrack. I've been humming the title track for the last two weeks. Even when I don't want to hum it, I'm humming it to myself. Now, just now, you talked about nerves and nervousness. How did you feel about singing for such a great music director like Ilya Raja? Because you sang a song in this film. Yeah, I know. Um, I was petrified. I'm not a singer, and uh, singing is a, is a huge ordeal for me. But as you know, they have lovely machines now, which can put you in <laughs> tune. And uh, there's been an extensive use of these machines, as far as I'm concerned. You're being very uh, modest now. No, Come really. We know I, you're a good singer. I, I never had the courage to actually stand in front of him and sing. So I asked him to compose the tune and send it across to Mumbai. And that's what he did. And um, uh, I have my dear friend, Adesh Srivastava, who's also a great music director. And we sit in his small little studio, and, and we sing. And we spend many days on the auto tuner. And you're just being, you're being really nerves. modest now. Come no, on, you're really. being. And, um, but never had an opportunity to actually sing in front of him. It, uh, it would be um, just impossible. I did get a very small moment with uh, Ilya Raja when we were recording a, a small, uh, small ditty for the film Pa, 
uh, when the little kid sings a song. Uh, but that's the closest that I ever got to singing in front of him. Mm -hmm. And no, no, no. no. <laughs> and um, with with Shamitab, um, what I like about Arbalki's filmmaking is he puts across a message, but he does it with humor. With the first two, has, has he done that again with Shamitab? Is he put humor and but then put a message across as well? Oh, yeah, I think his his writing is very special. Yeah, he has a way with words. Um, um, if you saw the trailer, there's that little moment about whiskey and pani, and. Um, where he perhaps explains uh, what whiskey means without water. The fact that whiskey jo hai wo, um, aap chal sakti hai, or whiskey, when you put, m when you mix it, um, you don't need, you don't get any intoxication with water, but you get intoxicated with whiskey. And he compares himself to whiskey and the other fellow to water. Uh, it's not just a, a simile that he's creating with these two objects. It is actually describing his ego when he's describing two different personalities. Where he's trying to show that whiskey, which is me, is more important than water because whiskey needs water, but whiskey, um, water needs whiskey to get intoxicated, but whiskey doesn't need anybody. So it's actually a wonderful way of putting objects together in reality, but yet connecting it with the storyline and the nature of the characters that are associated with the film. Mm -hmm. um, before we go to questions of the audience, I've got one question for you about acting. Um, we know that your, one of your acting heroes is Mr. Dilip Kumar Saab. What did you learn from him as an actor? Because a lot of people have learned from you as an actor, but what did you learn from your, from your acting hero? Is there any one lesson that you really picked up from him? Yeah. I think one of the greatest qualities in Dilip Saab is the way he listens to his co-star. And um, there are not many actors that can have that kind of ability to listen actually to, you know, we know the script, we know the dialogues much beforehand. We probably rehearse them, you know, a million times. But to be able to look at someone at the time of the take as though it's being spoken for the first time, that is a great quality. And that is uh, one of the things that, that drew me towards him. I think acting is not about delivering your lines. I think it's how closely you can remain silent and observe the other person. Um, that to me is a quality that Dilip Saab has always had, and which is why he's an idol for me and a, and a great, great actor. Okay, who's got a question? Yes. Have any of you got a question? And it's about Shamir Dab. Okay, go on, you can go first. Thank you. Um, my name is Son Mukherjee. Uh, I've prepared it before. I'm a director in training working towards joining a London film school or degree in film directing. My three most inspirational directors are Satyajit Ray for Nayak with Uttam Kumar, Richard Attenborough's Gandhi and Chaplin, and contemporary Russell Brothers' Captain America II, The Winter Soldier. It is my vision uh, to and lifetime goal to direct a film on Togo and it's my directorial vision to see you as to go. My question to you is, what can we do to promote making more films on Indian historical figures in international films? Because I believe that many iconic Indian historical figures are not known or represented in the world. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that question, because really that's something that we've been discussing uh, for a very long time. I think that uh, through cinema, we can educate the people on some very historic figures uh, that have come out. Um, and, as you s and as you ask this question, may I just inform you that um, just a couple of days ago, uh, I sang the national anthem. Um, it was composed and written by Rabindranath Tagore. And Balki felt that because the national anthem is played in theaters in Mumbai before the start of a show, um, and because the film is about sound and voice, it would be nice if the national anthem could be sung in my voice. I made an attempt, and then he wanted it to be shot um, visually, and uh, he decided to shoot it in Shanti Niketan, which has a great association with Togo. Uh, time restraints and constraints uh, made it not possible. So we actually shot it in uh, Thakurbari in uh, Jorasanko, which is his ancestral home in Kolkata. And uh, what a great experience that was. And really, it's something that 
I'm, you know, coming on to 73 year, years in age now, but I had never seen Togo's ancestral home. And it was an absolute emotional delight to be there within the precincts of this wonderful, wonderful uh, old home of his. Very vast, has a lot of history. Um, each and every room uh, that you visited, his, his properties, his, uh, his, his bed where he breathed his last, uh, another portion of the house where the clothing that he wore. I mean, these are just so, so emotional and so binding. Uh, I do agree with you that we should be doing more films and making films on historical figures just to propagate the fact that these were stalwarts of our country. Okay, next question. <laughs> okay, could this lady here? Namaste. Um, my name is Linda. I just had a question about the looks that came upon the movies um, that you've done in Arabaki, so in Pa and when you portrayed Auro in Chinikam and in Shamitab. Can you talk about how they came about, so how you discussed the look for Shamitab? Yeah. Well, for Shinikam, um, Balki felt that, you know, I should look different as well. He felt that I've never had a ponytail in my life. So he decided to give me one. Um, pa was, you know, an incredible feat by uh, a wonderful lady from Hollywood uh, makeup department. Um, the whole process of making me look 13 years old was, was all her doing. It's uh, very heavy prosthetics that takes about, or took about uh, five hours to put on. And uh, it's quite, quite a task to be sitting there while the prosthetics are coming on. Uh, you can't move, you can't speak, uh, you can't eat anything, you can't, you're just about able to breathe. Uh, they leave just two little nostrils here and some pipes so you can breathe. But most of the face is being worked on and it takes about two and a half hours to take it off. And then you have about eight or nine hours of work. So that's quite an experience by itself. But it was so realistic that it actually helps, helps help me or helps any artist. Uh, once the look is right, for some reason, you actually start behaving like that person. And it's more to do with the kind of makeup that has come on you than your own ability or your own talent. So prosthetics and makeup go a long way. Um, for Shamita uh, Balki wanted a kind of look that you see now, a lot of hair, very uncumped uh, hair on top, uh, an unkempt beard. And uh, it takes a while to stick it on and make, make it look real. Most of, most of the beards, at least in, in India, they're actually pre-prepared on a net. And that net is then stuck on with glue. And it's the most uncomfortable experience ever. Because it restricts your movements. You can't speak well. You can't move around well. You can't eat anything. Um, and in the heat, it's, it's just terrible. So what, is, what most of uh, the modern uh, makeup people do is they stick on each hair. So piece by piece, each hair is put on. And that takes about two hours. And it took about two hours to put on this look. Wow. Okay, we've got time for two more questions. Okay, can we get someone from the back over there? Uh, there's a lady there. I can just see her hand. This, that, there you. Yeah. Hi, sir. It's a pleasure speaking to you. I'm a fashion design student, and I think you're the best, best styled celebrity in the world. I love how you mix match your socks. Always <laughs> amazing socks. And I would like to ask you a question. Uh, you have done such versatile roles. What's so different about this movie, and why should we watch it? Uh, thank you so much for all these lovely compliments about my socks. Oh, but you didn't think that was going to happen today, yeah, did you? And, uh, why are you looking at my socks all the time? <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> well, as I said, uh, it's really uh, a unique concept where uh, someone's voice is given to somebody else. But to be able to perform it is, is rather tough. And as I was uh, saying a little while ago, we actually recorded the entire film. And then we perform to the recording. So we actually lip sync what we have recorded
previously. And because uh, facial expressions with different people uh, when they are lip syncing is different when they are performing, we have to read up the whole thing again to match uh, the facial expressions. It's like what we do when we sing songs in our movies. We lip sync the songs. The song is sung by greats like Lata Mangeshkar, Kishore Kumar, uh, Mohammad Rafi, and we lip sync. When Lata Ji or Kishore Kumar sing songs, they sing as singers. We perform according to our character what they have already sung. So our facial expressions and our movements are different to when they were singing. So that's the kind of equation we had with this film. Uh, we had to perform differently to an already recorded piece. And uh, that was uh, one of the most uh, trying moments uh, when we were shooting this film. Okay, we've got time for one more question. And I don't know who to pick. I mean, this is getting really... Um, shall we... Do you want to pick the last question? Huh? Okay. Um, shall we pick... Uh, huh? Okay, this, this gentleman here. I so see you're quite an active embrace of Twitter and Facebook and you've got such a busy lifestyle. How do you manage to keep up to date? Yeah, just before going to bed, um, just an hour or so, um, write my blog, catch up with Twitter, Facebook. It's, it's a wonderful medium. And uh, for most of my career in films, I'd, I could never ever had the, I never had the opportunity to meet my well-wishers uh, or know who they were what their thoughts were, what they thought about me, or what they did not think about me. Uh, never knew um, the criticisms that they may have had, the ideas or the suggestions that they may have wanted to make. And thank you for this wonderful medium where I am able to interact with them, listen to their voice. And now, um, as many in my blog would know, we have a face, and we have uh, groups, and we have uh, a very composite family, and I keep meeting them. They come over to India. I'm, when I'm in London, I meet some of the London EF, my extended family, as I call them. And uh, it's, it's just a fantastic moment. The, the kind of comments, the kind of uh, responses that I get are just so, so worthy of this association. Um, there's a lot of abuse. There's a lot of uh, uh, criticism. But I think that if you're on a medium, uh, you should be prepared for that. Uh, I don't object to it. I think it's, uh, I need to know if I'm doing something wrong. And I need to know if it can be corrected. And therefore, I, I don't you know, block them or cut it off or anything like that. OK, ladies and gentlemen, can we have one loud cheer for the biggest legend of Indian cinema? My hero, your hero, everybody's hero, Mr. Amita